You're listening to Movie Reviews and More with Brian Sebastian, only on L.A. Talk Radio. Hello, here we are. It's Brian Sebastian live with Movie Reviews and More. And uh, today will be a really, really fun show. I had a little accident on the way over here. I got stuck in a subway, if you can believe that. But here I am, and here we are. And let's start off with Brett Bauer. Brett Bauer is one of our co-hosts for things that we've done on the Movie Review and More side. Uh, we have Victoria Renee Plummer here, which is good, and we have an old friend, Mike Musantri, uh, which is great to see him. He's a loud mouth, but I like what he kind of <laughs> says, says, says coming out of his mouth because he doesn't have a filter. None. He says he would be good today, but you just never know. I'm going to behave. And that's okay. <laughs> so he says. Brett, let's start with you. Tell everybody what you do, where you came from, and how we found each other. Oh, whoa, how we found each other. Um, well, I'm <laughs> from New York originally, and I've been in L.A. for about nine and a half years now. And um, I work in sports nutrition, but I also work with clients to help them with emotional eating. So, oh. But I actually met Brian through one of the events that I work in the bodybuilding industry, because um, I also do co-hosting. In Riverside, California. Yeah. With Chris Menace's show. Yes, Chris Menace. He has a Tahoe show, the Frigno Legacy, and the NPC West Coast. And Victoria, tell us how we met. <laughs> oh, Brian. <laughs> <laughs> we met, I have a, I'm a singer, and I have a song that came out in a documentary that I was both singing in and acting in, and it was featured in Hollywood Film Festival, which Brian was a part of and helped orchestrate, and uh, we've been best friends ever since. And she's a great singer. See, the reason I ask everybody to uh -huh. give their story because I fill in the blanks of where we really met and what we were really doing when we met. <laughs> so, when we met, where were you singing in January at NAM? I was. Oh yeah, I was singing. Yeah. At, see, this yeah. is why I have to remind everybody. <laughs> you were you were on this great huge stage yes. for She Rocks. Yes, the She Rocks Awards. I sang. Uh, only happy when it rains uh, by garbage. garbage and she was there and yeah. I was just like so nervous to sing her song in front of her but it was so fun and she was so supportive and the band was it's Beyonce's house band mm -hmm. actually and yeah. the bass player is her artistic director and for like her touring for like the last 10 years so she was just incredible to work with yeah. like just just so she just knows exactly what to do and what to say and it was it was a really cool experience and the newcomer you were the newcomer there how did you get picked talk about that I this wasn't. is the filler <laughs> of things because she's with all these iconic people uh name some who were there Ooh, this is the time uh, to make you shine okay Victoria. i'm really <laughs> bad about this so obviously the lead singer of garbage was there um uh, who uh, else? Who else was there? There were so know, many people. There was there was a lot of people there. There must have been a thousand people yeah. there, and I was so happy to see her. Like Tracy Lynn Cowan was there, Justin. Terry Marie was there, Andrew was there, yeah. Alan was Debbie Allen there. there. Was that a different show? No, 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 <laughs> no. She was there. There's she a was lot. There's there, a, yeah. There's a lot of people that were there. You're just like walking by, and all of a sudden they're yeah. there. Yeah. Which is interesting. And I'm like, well, she's on stage with Beyonce's band. <laughs> it was so awesome. All women. Yeah. And I was like, wow, this is incredible. Who would have picked this one out? Oh, you know what? Um, the, the Who is her? The, the singer she did. From ooh. from Phil Spector. Yeah. Uh -huh. she, she's the first female cover of the Rolling on the Rolling Stones. Yep. Ronnie I, Spector. Yes, yes. And uh -huh. I, I was uh, a. <laughs> so we imagine her. <laughs> imagine her just like this with this energy in the background, <laughs> in the dressing room, all these people, these yeah. iconic people. Well, she walked in. She had her rehearsal in our rehearsal space after my rehearsal with the band because we only get one yeah they're they're very busy but i saw some <laughs> of those behind the scenes photos yeah. on that, which was good it was hilarious because i was like oh i love this song you know and i started singing along with her and i didn't realize that it was her song <laughs> i was like oh you're the original but okay. she loved it yeah she we, she's so awesome yeah. super supportive female supporting female iron sharpens iron really really cool people yeah Mike, talk about how we met. We don't have to mention where we met. We met at a convention. <laughs> we, <laughs> so were on, it, we were on vacation. <laughs> I heard you guys were on a date. Is that, we were, is that uh, we were on vacation. Like, well, it was kind of a date, but it was fun. <laughs> what was it, Vegas? It was in Vegas. A romantic yes. bromance. Yes. Huh? And it's oh, Vegas. Yeah. Uh. But talk about when you guys got here earlier. Everybody had ice cream. Yes, everybody had ice cream. All right, so if you don't know Mike's really story, 
uh, and we have to thank him for his service because he, you know, he's a New York cop for 19 years, oh, right? Yeah. 19, 20, years. 20. That's right. Okay, 20, 20 years. I wasn't sure if you. 1984 to 2004. Imagine all the stuff that he saw. A lot. Yeah. 9/11 Nine, being one of them. Exactly. Oh, wow. yeah, I was in the buildings, but that's the bad end of it. Yeah. Good end was sort of a lot of fun stuff. And and you know, talk about your two New Yorkers here coming from New York, what it's like to come and live here. Ha. Cuz everybody's gone through this stuff. Oh. So, yeah, <laughs> see, you see the faces? How much, what how they much don't time tell do you have? is when you come I don't in, think we yeah. have enough time. <laughs> no, we got enough. <laughs> that's the whole thing. But it was it was pathetic dealing with the people from L.A. coming from New York uh -huh. when you just want people to be honest. Tell me the truth. <laughs> right, wrong, or indifferent, I don't care. You won't hurt my feelings. Yeah. But tell me the truth. But a lot of people out here tell you what you want to hear or what they think you want, want to hear and, and think that they you could do something for them or whatever so they can get something for free. It's just a doggy doggy I can't can't deal with it I almost left after a year and a half I was very close to going back but I didn't want to hear those words I told you so and here's what happened I don't know if you remember this we were on the balcony talking you were talking about the idea of starting your ice cream trucks I, I basically and was, he was almost gonna leave I'm like no do your do do we don't have ice cream trucks out here nothing now you have five I came out here to sell cars and I got lied to there and it was pretty bad. Oh, I forgot about that. Yeah, and it was pretty bad. So my back was up against the wall, and I was like, "All right, what am I going to do? What am I going to do? Do I want to go back and and hear it from everybody? <laughs> I told you so. I, I don't want to hear that. So I went all in, and I started the ice cream company, All American Softy. Yep. And I started a hair salon for my wife, NY Two LA, on Ventura yep. Boulevard in Tarzana. The same exact month. Whoa. Opened wow. them both up the same exact month, and they're both successful. So you're super lazy. Yeah. Oh saying. yeah, yeah. Super, lazy. super lazy. But you know, here <laughs> you know, again, all. coming from New York, where you could get anything and everything done, whether you're in your uniform or not, and then coming out here and, and, and wanting to get things, it's just not easy. We all get lied to because it's the entertainment. It's it's, it's the facade of what they don't tell you that you need to get done. Mm -hmm. I saw the frustration on your face. I saw it on your face. I've seen it. People lie to you, and it's just not fun. You know, it's, it's funny like making too. a movie. I get a customer that leaves a message on my phone, which is very rare because I answer it all the time. I answer it when I'm in the shower, when I'm having sex. It doesn't matter. I answer it all the time. And he does. <laughs> and anyway, so how does your wife I, feel about that? Uh, she, you know, she, she gets a little angry. <laughs> gets a little angry, especially when she's almost there. <laughs> anyway, uh, so <laughs> so so w when I get a message and I call them back right away, people are like, oh, thank you for calling me back. Well, silly, I want your money. That's why I'm calling you back real fast. He's not I mean, selfless. Why, why, why are people, do, why, if I don't call you back when I want your money, what am I going to do like while I'm there and I got your money? Just, right. so, so I wasn't used to that. You know what I mean? Like you're supposed to call people back. You're yeah. supposed to call them back when you want to do business with people. Yep. So when you're, you, you know, you call them back and people are shocked that you call them back. I was a little, it was it weirded me out. I'm like, what, See, what's wrong I with call you now? guys all the time. I call, I'm used to calling everybody and mm -hmm. then people are like offended. Why are you calling sometimes? Because we grew up on the East Coast. Yeah. You're supposed to communicate. Right. And people are like, nah, 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 they're texting and stuff all the time. Right. It's like making a movie. You know, if you don't call someone back, how are you going to get all this stuff done? But I think it also has to do with this time and age where everything is so digital and fast that a lot of people don't like to talk. Everything's like the fingertips. So they want, just, just text me, just message me. You know, so many people don't even listen to voicemails anymore. So I think it's a combination of everything. I yeah. don't listen to voicemails. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> My mailbox is full right now, I do know. But like, I'm like, oh, I have to go through all that. But yeah, um, but I do like to communi communicate and talk with people, but I have seen a shift from coming out here in combination with technology too. Well, with the ice cream business, I get a lot of people emailing me and I check it every few minutes, you know, and I'm, I'm like, all right, I'll respond back. But mm -hmm. after they start asking like three or four, text message I mean emails back and forth I'm like I right, listen this is a little bit too crazy here's my phone number call me yeah. you know what I mean I just yeah. don't want to go I'm, I'm not corporate America I don't want to go back and forth with te text messages or emails so I just tell them straight out call me and some people think it's rude I'm like rude to what to talk to get it over with quickly and, and <laughs> yeah and easily and when you communicate at least you know what I'm saying and I know what you're saying you can exactly. misconstrue things so easily on text messages and emails that I'll just different people and the way that they talk sounds one way on in text and then 
they mean it a totally different way, but if you don't know them, then you don't know that. And, you're and the bad thing about it. that here is that that's where a lot of mis and lack of communication happens. Right. Mm -hmm. And I, I, that's like my number one peeve. I mean, if I'm going to call you, I'm, I'm calling you for a reason. And it's usually to invite you to something. And didn't we call right. you a zillion times today and you didn't answer your hey, phone? Hey! My phone Chris? died. I was, I, and I was in a, all right, no one wants to hear this. I was in a tunnel, <laughs> in a subway. I've never been stuck in a, a tunnel in a subway with no phone reception. That was just weird. I just kept saying, he's a black guy. He's going to be late anyway. <laughs> well, no. <laughs> that took a long turn. No, I'm really white. I'm always on, I'm always early. <laughs> I, am. <laughs> I saw you from the waist down. You are black. Oh, see, I told you guys used to date. Yeah. I wasn't wrong. But here, here's it's the thing. Out, no. I'm really proud of Mike and Lynn and, and the people that, that, that have come out to support the business because it's all about supporting small businesses. And these are the things that we also want to do here in Los Angeles and take it around the world. Whether it's your business or what you want to do, jump into what you really want to do. Because you come from a good background coming up from upstate New York also. Um, yeah, so I, I grew up in upstate New York, and I grew up as a competitive dancer and cheerleader, if you want to consider that a sport, but it was very it's intense, totally sport, you know, so my life consists of getting up at 5 o'clock in the morning, go to the gym, train, then I go to school, and then I go to practice, and then I go to dance practice after that, and so I just grew up in this competitive and intense environment, and so from then, over the years, I struggled with different body image issues and eating disorders and just all the pressure that was, you know, the environment that I was in, so... Um, now, in uh, my adulthood, I have a passion to help people that have struggled with weight loss. For myself, it was just the challenge of going on these restrictive diets because so many times I'd be like, okay, I'm going to be really good. I'll be on this diet for a long time. And then one little thing would make me feel like I failed and I would just go off and I'd just be off my diet, go out of the gym binge. for months and binge. And then so my weight would just cycle. I'd just go up and down, up and down all the time. So mentally and emotionally, I was just exhausted. And so... Yeah. It took me a long time to just kind of get in tune, figure out what worked for me, what worked for my body, and, and um, over the years just kind of developed a lot of tools because therapists and doctors never really helped me. I, I just talking to people that went through it and um, just learning, you know, myself and my body. And so, um, so now it's my passion. I work with clients and I help them overcome that cycle, which and he's is written two very books. exhausting. And so I did two books. Um, oh. The first one was um, because I have a major sweet tooth, and that was one of the things that would always trigger me to fall off my diet because I love cookies and ice cream. And not to say that you can't have that because we love ice cream, Mike. We totally do. Mm -hmm. um, and but I just didn't know moderation and balance. And for me, when I would have that sugar, it would just trigger me, and I'd want to go eat a bunch of other stuff because I was so restrictive. So this one cookbook is called No Cheat Sweets, and basically it's all these healthy alter alternatives that you can do to make recipes to curb your sweet tooth. Um, and then the second book is how to break free from emotional eating and yo-yo dieting. So those are my, my two. I'm going to continue to do more, but um, I, will be I just, investing in those. I just <laughs> know that as myself and as a female and being in a competitive environment still in Los Angeles and what I do in the fitness industry, um, it's really difficult because it's, there's just so much competition, a lot of pressure. And so um, I just know for myself, if I can break through barriers and, and overcome all of that, I know that other people can too, and the more females and, and, and men too that I talk to that, you know, are, have trouble, you know, even if they just want to put on weight and put on muscle and just sticking to that game plan, because everyone has life and life happens and situations happen, you know, so you don't have to be perfect. And the know? other thing about that is as we get older, you know, whether it's men or women, you know, we come up with these problems. I mean, typically I should be diabetic and overweight and have high blood pressure, but I don't have those things. Um, one, I'm not normal, but in general, that's, you know, if you look at the black culture, that's what we have. Mm -hmm. So, but, you know, look at you three. You guys are in great shape when it comes to stuff. It's not only because of being out here. It's like we kind of ain't have to be in a way. Oh, yeah. yeah. The pressure is on you. I mean, Mike yeah, always looks yeah. good, and so doesn't his wife, Lynn. Mm -hmm. But still, it's just, what am I going to wear? For women, you, you can't be photographed in the same outfit anymore. Oh, God forbid. No. Yeah. <laughs> You know, Mike and Lynn Me dress up. They switch. wear the same things. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we, we, I've uh, actually seen them Kim and Bobby, which I think, no, they do, which Every, I think is great. Even <laughs> having dinner on, on a Tuesday night, uh -huh. we match just all the time. I don't yeah. know why. It's just something that we've been doing for 21 years. On purpose uh, or yeah. by coincidence? No, on purpose. Like, I'd yeah. see what she's wearing, and then I would wear what color she's wearing. So when she's wearing a hot red dress, you put on a hot red dress? Right. Yeah, something like that. Oh. Yeah, yeah. No, <laughs> no but, they, but they look really, really good. Now, I think it's great because you don't see that. It's funny. Our kids no. used to make fun of us 
But yet now, one of them is getting married, and she does that with her boyfriend. Oh, it's hilarious. Wow. We are totally opposite. I <laughs> yeah, yeah, Link yeah. won't be doing that. No, okay, I always, like, when we're going somewhere, I like to put on dresses, just because it makes me, like, feel, yeah, I don't know, some type of way. And then Link almost is always in either camo or sweats or gym clothes. Like, he's just, like, I'll, like, be dressed to the nines, and he's just, like, no, you can't make me. <laughs> like, he's not I, I agree that with guy. That. And if you, she's talking about Link. It's Link Han, and he's got a new series coming out on Fox called Ghosted, which is great. And he's a great person. And we have really to say hi person. to Edie Han in Alabama, too. So, But, yeah, it's always tough doing that. Uh, one of the other things that we that we really like is St. Jude's Hospital. Talk about a better tomorrow on I, I, iTunes coming September 1st, right? Yes, yes. So I have a single coming out September 1st, and... As Brian just said, I'm so, so, so excited about this song. It's, I really, really, really put my heart and soul into this record. And um, and the proceeds are going to St. Jude. So it's, uh, buy it on iTunes, September 1st. And it'll be all over uh, streaming, A Better Tomorrow is what it's called, yeah. And um, it's going to be streamed on, on Spotify and everything else by t- uh, September 26th. Oh, my birthday. Oh, no way. I might have to have you come in that day. Okay. Oh, I have a show in Memphis. Yeah, you're going on tour, too. Yeah, I'm doing a little little, uh, mini tour. So St. Jude's having a big event in Memphis. I'll be performing at uh, with the song A Better Tomorrow, of course. That's good. And uh, then I'm going to Graceland and then uh, Nashville. And then I'll be back home. Uh, But, oh, uh, you can see it on Hand in Hand Entertainment Biz under The Last Ride documentary Mm -hmm. that we spoke about before. And you can watch the whole thing and the song in it and 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 kind of see Edie's story and, and where she came from, who is how I actually met Brian. Yeah. Yeah. Well, the, the other thing about living in Los Angeles and not staying in shape and looking good, it's, it really is challenging. Yes. I've seen your workout videos. I've seen yours. I haven't seen Mike's, but, <laughs> you know, <laughs> but, but it comes to all that. I work that. out on my wife. <laughs> <laughs> but but the thing about that is you do have to go to the gym all the time or do yoga and pilates and everything like that yeah talk you about do. that what's your well it's easier i'm really lucky because i have a partner link who is a workout like he's a gym rat he, he i'm just gonna say it he's a gym rat and so it's easier for me i'm not a morning person i never have been i would much rather be up late at night but we every 5 a.m every single morning he drags me out of bed because i tell him to and uh we we go hit the gym get it done and you go together and we go together we train together yeah Yeah. no that's good yeah yeah mike what do you do when you're busy stuff because you know i know you're always on the phone doing i've never worked out a day in my life (laughs) i i believe that for some strange (laughs) reason never my wife works out five six days a week and like i said i work out on her it's it's and then you still stay in shape. Yeah, you well, I, I work. it's because he's so energetic. <laughs> yes, it I, just I, falls I, right off of him. That's that's that is true. <laughs> work work <laughs> keeps me busy. You know, yeah. stay in shape when you're working. Yeah. Brett, it's when true. you're traveling on the road all the time, it's it's uh, hard when in the world of fitness doing stuff. What do you do? Oh gosh, besides worry about what gym I'm going to. Um, yeah, I that's actually, a big thing. And then eating. Yeah, so uh, that was a big challenge for me when I first started traveling for work. Um, but then I would just find hotels that had kitchens, or I'd pack certain foods. But I always go before I go to a trip. Say I'm flying to Sacramento or I'm, I'm flying to Vegas. I always book my hotel that's close to a gym or close to my yoga studio because I'm really into Bikram yoga. And so I just uh, I just modify everything, you know. But I'm a morning person, though. I've always been a morning person. So as soon as my alarm clock goes off at 4.30 or 5, I'm like, I'm excited to get up because I love going to the gym because I like being up before everyone else is up and that's being there before the crowd is there. Yep. And then the rest of your day is free. And yeah. I found for myself that I don't have a lot of energy if I don't have that morning workout because for me it's like my mental clarity and focus and the time to meditate and I just think about everything I want to get accomplished that day. You know, I just release sweat and I just feel awesome. So I don't have the same energy and focus if I don't go to the gym in the morning. I'm the same way. That's why I always tell him every morning, just get me up, even though I don't necessarily like waking up at 4.30, 5 o'clock. But I don't actually really like coffee very much. So (laughs) 
my pre-workout is my coffee. Yeah. <laughs> yeah it's that's not funny. good. I shouldn't. Yeah. Quit. No, I definitely need caffeine. That's for sure. Yeah. You know, but um, it's all of a sudden have trouble. Yeah. And then, but. and then there's that empowering feeling, you know, Link and I always talk about how you've already lifted weights and showered and most people are not going to wake up for another four hours. Yeah. That's true. No, exactly. No, it's awesome to be up when it's still dark outside. Yeah, yeah. You know? You're done with your workout. Yeah. It's still I get up. My alarm clock is the sun. When yeah. the sun comes up, I yeah. wake up. That's yeah, mine that's too. Early. Is that an East Coast thing you think? I, I because that's know, how I, I leave wake all, up. I don't have any shades on my windows. Me and, either. You know, my wife has to put that thing on her eyes just to get another hour or two sleep. Yeah. You know? keep it dark I but just once the sun comes up, like up i wake too. up and that's and that's even if i went to sleep because on saturday night sometimes me and my wife don't even go to sleep we you're out wow. yeah and late saturday nights yeah. are crazy but, nights for me and my wife but i have to go to bed early yeah i'm, I'm really cranky because i know it's for myself if i don't get edit and he knows i get really cranky and i get really stressed out because if i don't get at least seven hours of sleep i can't function in the exact and same I'm, way i'm delusional yeah and i get so i always have to go to bed early because no matter what i automatically wake up super early so if i go to bed late i'm still waking up at sleep 4:35. is overrated i will sleep when i die oh my gosh i <laughs> wish i agree I wish. if i don't I get woken function. up I, I will never wake up yeah i won't i, I i'll sleep that. forever <laughs> I just, oh my I gosh i don't up. require much sleep me either yeah oh, you, I, you I figure it. it out you don't we don't have an option sort of in our in our work field yeah to sleep very much yeah, you yeah. kind of get used to it but Sometimes I just have to accept that my sentences won't always make sense. Oh, yeah. <laughs> like, that's just what it is. Well, have this one make sense. Give me your website and how people can reach out to you songs. Sure. Um, my website is victoriaofficial.com and uh, handinhandentertainment.biz. Mike? Mine is allamericansofty.com. Softy is S-O-F-T-Y, and don't let the name fool you. <laughs> I was going to say. That, that's pretty good. Are you talking? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Brad? <laughs> <laughs> He's smiling, so I'm the one with the sarcastic comments. Uh, I'm going to hold oh, it back. Oh, wait. You actually, said it I me. just I forgot. I just changed my website. It's victoriaplumber.net. That's what I thought. So. Yeah, you're right. Okay, you're right. that's why I ask. I ask yeah. a couple times during the show because you always want people to reach in and try to look up things because yeah. we have these social media people coming on. And the phone number, just in case, is 818 570 Five seven zero five zero eight five. Let's talk about eating and movies and films. Ooh, three of my Mike is things. Italian, so you know they love to eat. <laughs> they have eat. courses of stuff. Mike, what's a film that you really like that might have eating in it? And talk about what you like to make. Ah, uh, let's see. Uh, Goodfellas is funny because Excellent they're cooking film. in jail and they're cutting the garlic. It's mm-hmm. hilarious because that's how Italians are. We cut the garlic. They had everything brought in. So it's almost, it, it is funny. Being Italian is a funny thing, especially <laughs> out here in L.A. Mm-hmm. That's Not too many Ita- Italians out here, especially New York Italians. I'm a New York Italian. Okay. I'm an upstate Very New good. York Italian. Does that count? Doesn't count. I'm half the Sicilian. <laughs> <laughs> <It's> <laughs> the, Sicilians say. don't count either. That's what I tell my wife. My wife's Sicilian. Sicilian. I couldn't count. even tell my wife she was Sicilian, uh, my family that I was with a Sicilian because yeah. oh, it's wow. like such a big thing in the Italian world. I totally. mean, it's like Sicilians and all the other Italians. Yep. <laughs> yeah, that's that's, that's wow. interesting. It's but funny. still together for 21 years. 21 years. That's Never great. had a fight. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> eating. Eating in a movie. Great movie that you can think of. Because first can of we all... Could we go a TV show? Doesn't matter. Okay. One of my favorite... Well, probably my favorite TV show. And you might laugh, but I think it's one of the most well-written shows, and it's hilarious, and it's actually where I first learned sarcasm, was The Golden Girls. And every oh, night, they funny. would go there, and they would have their, their, their talks and their desserts. And I'm a big dessert freak. I love sugar, as we talked about. So anything it. sweet. Oh, trust me. So, um, so yeah, so that's one of my favorite TV shows. I own the box set, and people still make fun of me. But I think it is <laughs> hilarious and, like I said, really well written. And, um, yeah, so I was really big on dessert. So every time they'd be eating dessert, I'm like, oh, they're having cheesecake, they're having this. So um, for me, that was totally my thing. Victoria, do you have one? Nope. <laughs> 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 I don't know. I'm just, I, I really like dessert. Like, I, I'm a gusher person. I, like, can't resist gushers. I can't. It's, this it's so weird. Yeah, I think it's because my it mom, it's like a fruit roll-up. My mom would never let me have it fruit because she said it caused cavities yeah. growing up. And all my friends would have gushers in their lunch boxes, and I would have an apple. And I'm like, well, that sucks. Uh, <laughs> so funny, like, like now, now I can't say no to them. Yeah. When you said gushes, I'm thinking like a little baby when we're giving them a bath. 
their thighs if they're a little heavy. <laughs> My mother used to call them gushes. <laughs> so I'm thinking. Well, that's not that different. <laughs> well, talk I'm about uh, talk about where you came from too. Where I came from, I came from Indiana, yep. Indianapolis, Indiana. It's a uh, it's great. It's, it was perfect for me for growing up and raising a family. It's the fir- it's a perfect place. It's your it's a pretty big city, but you also have farmland, and it's it's kind of the best of both worlds in that instance. Yeah. Yeah. So for me, I'll, I'm going to pick a weird one. Eat, drink, men, woman, and the cook, the thief, the wife, and uh, yeah, the cook, the thief, the wife, and the dinner. And it was always about just cooking. People became the meals of the this great Italian thing that they were doing in France. Everybody ended up being in the course. It was really, really interesting. Hmm. But you know, that's always good. Favorite TV show? You have a TV show besides the Golden Girls that you liked? Oh, well, I am a big comedy freak, so as you know that. Um, so anything from, like, American Dad, anything that has that, that really, like... Are you, like, a family guy type of thing? I, I, I love family you are. I, I'm a, I, like, I watch all the comedy shows. Um, I love the Jim Gaffigan show when that was okay. on, right. um, but I'm really into comedy. But I also am a, a nerd, and I love anything about um, history. Like, I love... Um, um, mysteries in the museum and I love forensic files like I, I love like how they figure out everything like I'm addicted to that I stuff, feel like so. we just became best friends besties yeah. yeah well you guys were kind of paired together before <laughs> you just that's didn't true. know <laughs> I didn't know that about you that's, that's why I always put that picture of you guys together at oh. the, the women's <laughs> <laughs> yeah <laughs> because you guys y- your personalities were fitting and I kind of just knew okay oh see. so TV He's on matchmaker your side. for us well yeah. I tend to do that Mm-hmm. Uh, for me, uh, same. I love comedy and I love learning. So, don't please don't make fun of me. I really love America's Funny Home Videos because I think it's so but it's funny. Successful. It is. It's been going for a really long time, and that's no. because it's really funny. But people think I'm stupid when I say that. But no. I think it's hilarious when people fall down. I mean, they I submitted d- it, so they're okay. Yeah. No, that's the thing, and that's why, like on on Instagram, I do a lot of funny videos, and yeah. I love watching their stuff because. I always laugh at myself. Like, I'm not a serious Same. person, and I feel like a lot of people in Hollywood and L.A., and especially the fitness industry, take everything so serious, and they have to be so hardcore, and yeah. look so perfect, and this and that. And it's just yeah. like, you know, keep it real. So I like to add a lot of humor into everything that I do because, yes, I'm really passionate about helping people with, you know, these eating issues, but I also love to laugh, and laughter cures all. I'm telling you, the more laughter you can have. So if I fall down on my face, I'm laughing. I'm not embarrassed, you know? So And I'm... She's also knows. clumsy. I'm very <laughs> clumsy. Mike, <laughs> if, 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 and I'm open the door, Mike, when she walks out because she will walk into it or she'll knock <laughs> the will. mic off. She's <laughs> like that. Something always happens. I'm I, I'm I'm accident door. prone. Are you kidding me? Really? <laughs> I'm accident prone, but I I own it though. I'll, I'll be honest yeah, about it. Yeah, so, that makes it a lot yes, better. You I've, can laugh at yourself. Just <laughs> life in general. Right? TV show that you like when Two you're going to ah. With Charlie, Charlie, of course. Yes, not, exactly. Not with, not with yeah, the other guy. Charlie, yes. <laughs> no. I, I figured you were going to say like the she, you know, the Shield or something. Or no, Law no, and no, Order. no, You know, I used to never watch. Well, actually, no, that wouldn't fit you. I used to never watch cop shows until now that I'm retired. Now I watch cop shows. What, what's but when your, I was what's your cop, thoughts on those, though? Cop shows? They, yeah, I used to think they, they were bogus when, when I was a cop. But uh, now, because I'm not a cop anymore, I miss it. I like watching cop shows. You still have your Shield? Uh, yes. Yes. Yeah. See, I thought he was going to say, like, Beverly Hills Housewives. Or no, something. I can't, yeah. <laughs> no. I, I, I can't watch any of those reality shows. Yeah. They're so dumb. The, the Kardashians. Mm-hmm. Give me a break. <laughs> you know, at one time you wanted to do one, didn't you? Reality yes, show. Yes, I did. Uh, only because everybody <laughs> kept telling me your life should be a freaking <laughs> it a, is. A reality show. It, I it, would it watch is. it. I'd watch it. Well, it was funny. Th- I think it would have been convincing Lynn. Yeah, I could have had. Mike a, was all gone. I could have had a book written about me. With, uh, Judith Regan wanted to write it, and wow. Lynn said no because of the fact that we have kids and we, they yes. were young at the time. Yeah. Now they're all older. The youngest one's twenty four years old, so it wouldn't matter. Uh, <laughs> That's true. But you're proud of your kids. I, I see the photos of them, and I'm like, wow, they've grown up really quickly. Yeah, five kids. None of them are like. Uh, none of them have been arrested. None of them uh, are drugs. All working hard. Uh, That's not easy. Yeah, you know, it's 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 good I'm, I'm especially happy. when they you know they were going back and forth to two coasts too that must have been as a parent it was expensive but yes very and, expensive you know, yeah yeah but look how they turned out it's a good thing yeah yeah all five kids doing well which is great anybody going into the family business uh my son's a cop 
Is he really? Yeah, he's, oh, that's right. Yeah, he's a cop up in Newark. When you think of Newark, you think of yeah. the armpit of America, New Jersey. Yeah. But uh, it, it's Newark, California, which is up by San Jose and uh, Fremont. Did you see that coming? Uh, no, I didn't think he was going to be a cop. Uh, but he became a cop. He's doing great. He's actually uh, now um, hostage ne- negotiation officer. Interesting. Which is wow. funny because I would be like total, totally, op- totally opposite of my son. Because he says to me, Dad, you wouldn't last five minutes being a cop today because I'm the most politically incorrect person on the planet. That's true. So, I mean, hostage negotiations or any type of negotiation. I remember going to a, 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 a scene one time when a guy was going to jump from the train tracks on Christmas Eve, and it was 3.30, and I get off at 3.35, and I was going to go to dinner at my mom's house. And I, I, I had to rush there because I said, I got to get there first. I don't want to get stuck with any bullshit. Over, uh, yeah, sorry, I can't curse. doesn't matter. Okay. Uh, any overtime or anything like that. So as soon as I got there, I went, <laughs> right, New York. I went right on the train tracks. I said, listen, pal, it's 3.30. I get off in five minutes. It's Christmas Eve. I know you don't have a life and you want to kill yourself, but I'm coming out there and I'm going to grab you. And if you resist, I'm going to push you. Either way, I'm going home. Either you dead or you alive. So you're going to come with me or you're not. And I went out there. I just grabbed them, pulled them in. And the guy was like, I couldn't believe you just pulled me in. What are you, nuts? <laughs> you know? <laughs> you were going to push me? And I was like, yeah, I was going to push you because it's Christmas Eve, man. I'm going home. And it worked. It worked. Okay. But in today's world, you can't do that. Yeah. No. Probably Today they entertain. I, I watch these, these car chases and they're like chasing after a car. And I'm like, <laughs> what, what? this is like cracks me up, man. I, I would have rammed the guy. And it would have been over. There's not car chases in New York. <sighs> no, we had, I missed the car chases. Those were when car chases were good. Oh, what gosh. made you want to be a cop? <laughs> I was actually in the restaurant business, and I was doing well. And everybody said, you need a real job. So I said, okay, I'll take all the civil service tests, and the first one I pass, I'll, I'll do. And I became a cop when I was 21 years old. Wow. Wow. Because they were hiring back there a lot. Oh, yes, that time period. 1984, too, yes. they were hiring a lot. A lot of cops were retiring, and I came on really young. Yeah. yeah one, of the, one of the best things you probably did in your life? It was fun. It was fun being a cop. But that was when you had authority, and being a cop was being a cop. Not like today. Today, you just uh, 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 you take reports. You're a report taker. I always and wanted to know abused. this. What did, when you were a New York cop, what, what would you think about L.A. cops and what was going on with gangs like 86 out here? I came out here oh, in 87. Yeah. What, what were you guys hearing on the East Coast? What was that like? Well, we, we, we know that there's a lot of gangs, East Coast and West Coast. You know, I, I dealt with a gang called the Chingalinks. Oh, and yes. I'll never forget the first time I was, I was a rookie. I'm riding with this guy that was like John Wayne. I swear to God, he, he, his, his gun belt was down by his, you know, and he had bullets all over the place. And uh, he was tall. And uh, we get this call working a midnight shift. The Chinglings had a, a lot, making a lot of noise. And they got this uh, speaker out the window and motorcycles all over the place. So he goes there and uh, we, we, he, I'm, list, I'm just sitting back because I'm a rookie. And the guy tells him, you know, music's loud. You got to shut the music off. Blah, blah, blah. The guy says, F you to him. So he goes, all right. Let's. So we leave. We get in the car and I go, that's it? He goes, no, 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 watch this kid. So we go to the fire department. <laughs> we go get a fire truck. He calls a couple other units. We come back with a fire engine and two other cop cars, so three cop cars in total. And he goes up on the, uh, the ladder of the FD truck, pulls the speaker out of the window, throws the speaker on top of their bikes, knocks down about <laughs> three or four of them, comes back down. He goes, F me? No, F you. That That's is so great. epic. That's funny. And we leave. I was oh, like, wow. wow. This is the biggest gang in the world. That's wow. amazing. It was, it was totally not the way you do work today. No. I was going to say. I kind of <laughs> wish it you was. did. Not the way you do work <laughs> yeah. today, but it solved the problem. Yeah. Well, you know, I feel like oh, I'm probably going to get in a lot of trouble for saying this, but I, yeah. I kind of feel like people are just such crybabies mm-hmm. these days. They are. They're, they're entitled and they just... You know, it's guys. So like, sensitive. It's not. Don't. It doesn't have to be. I, I'm not saying that you can't. Not everything is not to be taken seriously. But there are some things that you're. You're just. You're trying. You're. You're trying to get in trouble. You're. Mm-hmm. And it's just. Guys, stop. Just. Just do what they tell you to do. It's not a big deal. I know. There's a lot of entitlement now, especially the younger generation, which. 
you know, a lot of people talk about the millennials and everything like that, but it is totally different, you know. I know. Let's talk about millennials. Yeah, exactly. Say that three times fast. When you think of social media, Mike, I got to start with you on this. What do you think of these kids who are great on Twitter and Facebook? And, and stuff like this. This must drive you nuts. It drives me crazy because I don't Twitter, <laughs> Twitter, or any of that stuff. Uh, I was trying, and it just drove me crazy. Well, I, you, you I, say I have, no have a good ass day, which I think is great. Ha <laughs> ha! You must be on my Facebook. Of That's course, the I look at it all the time. I'm on, and I get, I go in Facebook jail like every other month. <laughs> I, I noticed. <laughs> <laughs> he does actually yeah. every other month I, I hurt somebody's feelings and, and get reported pulled. my oh. wife actually reported me one time that Did was you really? yeah that was funny Why? I was like because I put something on there that I always put three beautiful asses on um, up on on Facebook and I tell everybody uh, today's Tuesday uh, let's not make this a bad day everybody I wishes have a, a good ass day and then it'll be like, uh, you know, this, the weekend's coming. I want everybody to have a great ass weekend. And like every day I would post three nice asses mm-hmm. and, you know, tell everybody to have a good ass day or a great ass day. So my wife got offended at this one where it was a girl on girl and it, it looked a little offensive. And she's got, she owns a hair salon. So she's got a lot of her clients that have kids and blah, blah, blah. So they see it. And so she got pissed off and she reported me to Facebook and <laughs> I was in jail and I was like I had a, and this is how I found out this is Facebook funny jail? I didn't know I thought so, you were kidding no 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 I'm, I'm so I'm I'm uh you know when I came out of jail uh, and, and I'm like trying to send something to my wife it won't let me she's no longer my friend because when somebody reports you you automatically not become friends anymore they, they disconnect <laughs> you so I'm like why can't I send the message to her I'm like so we're in bed and I'm telling her, I got, she goes, oh shit. She goes, I think I reported you. And when they report you, I go, you were the one that reported me? <laughs> <laughs> so she in, had to fess up. <laughs> yeah, she fessed up. So I was in jail because of her. That's oh funny. But yeah, she, you know, she, she, because of her clients and stuff like that, yeah. they get offended. And you know what? You shouldn't get offended. Just have a good ass day, everybody. You really do mean that. Just have a good day. Yeah, yeah. that's yeah. it. I'm just a little sarcastic. Yeah. But that's the thing, like you're you saying, want. people right. misconstrue or they take things the wrong way or they're so sensitive, it's you know, not like that serious. Just, I know. Just let it go. If it bothers you, don't look at that page anymore. I know. Right? It's that simple. I, I, Defriend me. I, that's yeah. the thing. I, I post up because I, I like comedy and I'm very sarcastic. And so people might not they think I'm being serious. So on Instagram, I can't tell you, I've gotten some messages that were just really mean because they thought I was being serious. And it's just like. I didn't even make joke. this meme. And if it's all lighthearted, it's nothing offensive, but people take things so seriously. Uh, uh, they'll, they nitpick. I mean, because it's that there's a meme talking about this guy sitting in his grandma's basement trolling on somebody's page, and he's like, Mom, give me another Hot Pocket. You yeah, know? Yeah, yeah. And that's exactly what it is. I yeah, feel yeah, like yeah. this world is so trolly because they don't have consequences when they're behind a screen in mm-hmm. their parents' basement or wherever they're trolling. It's just like, be nice. That's two, all. Two Just things you usually people. don't talk about, politics and religion, yep. and it gets you in trouble. But yeah. I'm so freaking happy that yeah. Trump is in charge now because it's, that political correctness nonsense is all out the window because yeah. he says stuff like me. I listen to him talk, and I'm like, wow, sounds like my dad or, or me or my <laughs> brother. You well, know? they're New Yorkers. Right. Right, and people get offended by that. Yeah. A lot of people get offended by me, even out here, once in a while. I try to joke around with a customer on the phone, and every once in a while you get somebody that, you know. It just doesn't gets, get it. D- doesn't get it, and they, they get upset. It's almost I, like, are you and, from and, California? And I, say, I say, you know what, go, go somewhere else. I don't, I don't need your business. <laughs> you know, yeah. talk, when, when we, you moved out here on the social media side of things in general, uh, I just want to continue with you on this. You posted a gym photo of you lifting weights, and someone re- responded to you. That must have been yeah. weird. Oh, no, it's, it was actually my best friend's husband, and he is a gym rat also. But um, his thing was I, had a, I have back problems, like pretty bad. Um, and I'm okay. It's no big deal. I mean, I, it's fixed for the most part, but um, I had – different was, diagnosis here or, or there like and that. I had yeah. a belt on yeah and so the argument is that people you you need to use your core and it it it, and it makes you not use your your core as much when you're squatting and you want to incorporate all of those muscles you know together or whatever and I was doing that because I was I wasn't squatting like insanely heavy but I had two plates on which is you know for my size it's a good amount of weight and I had to have a belt on, otherwise my back will just, it'll go. Yeah, and yeah. when it goes, I'm out for a second. Yeah. So I'd just rather be safe than sorry. 
that's all. Yeah, and they mm-hmm. responded weird. Yeah I, yeah, I saw that. I'm like, well, she's do- she's in the gym. Be happy that she's in the gym. Yeah, yeah. I yeah. mean, that's like nothing compared to the comments that I get. They're so <laughs> mean. Really? Oh my gosh! Like even when I was like on online, I did the online dating thing. Oh my gosh, the messages were just insane from like people asking me if I was a man and this and that and just it's just like people like you said when they're behind a computer screen they'll just say whatever it's same with drivers out here I notice they'll have you know the biggest attitudes behind the wheel and once they get out behind the wheel you know they're scaredy cats you know what I mean but they just get these these egos and it's just crazy so like I can't tell you that the negative comments I have gotten and and before it used to bother me and I'm just like you know what I don't even care you know I just laugh at it I go you know like this one guy actually we dated for a short period of time and we were cool, everything was great, just, you know, we just became friends and that was fine. And he actually made a negative comment on one of my photos after I did a, a photo shoot. And he goes, and he posted it up on my page and he goes, oh, he's like, geez, you look like a man or something about being manly Are you or whatever. Serious? And people don't know that like photos, in, especially in fitness, you know, we have to do a lot of things to kind of cut down. And so you appear larger yeah. than you really are in person. Of course. So um, when you're when you're um, depleting, you know, your, your skin gets thin and so your muscles kind of pop a little mm-hmm. more. So it was just for a photo shoot, the style photo shoot I was doing. And so, you know, I did look more muscular in that photo. And but the way that he made this comment, it's like whatever. And so I just kill people with kindness. I go, oh, thank you. You're so sweet. You know, I put a smiley face. Well. Instantly, he defriended me and blocked me. I'm just like, it's just so weird. But it's just like people just they just say whatever, and then they get so offended. But you should so have said what you wanted to say. And I know, but you know from what? The, and that's why I say you're New York, <laughs> from upstate New York. A New York from the city would have told them to go. Well, to this the, is the thing. She has I, to work in that industry. But I, so. I, I just kill people with kindness. You yeah. know what I mean? The more nasty you are to me, I'll just be super sweet back to you. So you know what? I never look like you know the ass. Like they're the yeah. ones right. with the class. So. But it's crazy. I mean, yeah. Yeah. You were talking about social media and stuff like that. Like, if, if you go on my Yelp reviews, this is funny. Because <laughs> Yelp, Yelp reviews, right? And I hate Yelp. I think it's, it, I don't really People like it. People shouldn't be on I Yelp. I don't like it. But what got me in trouble on Yelp was Groupon, which is another oh, total yeah, yeah, thing. So yeah. I got all these Groupon people that would use me, at, but they wouldn't pay tax and gratuity based on the whole check. Mm. And I would get into an, a debate with these people and then pretty much tell them you know what keep your money you need it more than I do or tell them something real I, if you read my Yelp reviews 99 out of 100 of them if I, I have that many bad reviews I don't but if almost all of them are Groupon related so you could read right through mm. it my real customers are great all great reviews you know nice everything's great but you talk about social media and that that part hurt me you yeah. know as far as Groupon with the cheap cheaper people that don't want to pay and then me being from New York telling them what they could do with themselves. So they're, oh. they're tipping on the discounted rate. Right, not which is not rate, fair. Which Groupon even has a message that say make yeah. sure that you tip on right. the right. original right. rate. I would yeah. explain to them. It's like going out to a restaurant. You order, you get two for one. You still have to pay tax and gratuity based on the two. Yeah. yeah. But they didn't want to do yeah. it. But you know what? Just to kind of clarify, even I'm from upstate New York, I served and I was a bartender for many years when I was in college and I had the same thing where I would be there late at night to like two three in the morning serving people and just just people just don't know the the industry and and how tipping is important and I can't tell you how many people I chased out the door because they didn't tip me or they left left me like two dollars on like a 200 something dollar check after just bending over backwards for them and I I did the same thing I chased them out the door I'm like I'm sorry they're like oh was there a problem like yeah there's a problem I think you need this more, this two dollars more than I do. And I said, <laughs> oh. "Thank you. Have a nice day. <laughs> oh, I, I do. Man. Let me fix my makeup. You know, <laughs> put my makeup back down. You know, because I just, I, I just, I won't put up with it." I learned no. when I was a kid had had it not once you you screwed me once by not tipping me or twice the third time it wouldn't happen. So mm-hmm. what I would do is I would actually look at the, the customers, figure out I they're wearing dirty clothes or whatever. It's late at night, six or more people. I would just write a separate check, put the gratuity on. Mm-hmm. They wouldn't even know it, mm-hmm. and then they'd still leave me a two or three dollar tip on top of that, really? and I'd be like, "Hey, have a good day." Well, here's <laughs> the thing: in Indiana, an at idea. restaurants, the servers make about two dollars an hour because yeah. literally their entire paycheck or all the money that they make is coming from tips. So in California, it's a little bit different because you get minimum wage and tips. But if you don't tip someone in Indiana, yeah. they don't get money, yeah. which is very sad. That's really sad. You mm-hmm. tip tip them or don't go out to eat. That's just how I feel about it. Mm-hmm. When we first moved out here, one of the things, and I think we've all been, yes, we've all been through this. California 
doesn't tell you how expensive it can be to live here. <laughs> they don't tell you when you move into a house, condo, or an apartment what kind of problems you're going to get. And then, you know, from running the apartments, dealing with weird people. Coming from New York, that mentality, as I grew up in Connecticut, we weren't like that. You know, we got great places, and they come out, you don't know what you're getting. So when I tell people when they come into California, make sure you've got enough money, make sure you've got some friends out here, and that you've got something lined up, because it, you, get, you get here, and it's, you're in for trouble. It's a struggle. Talk about your situation in the apartment. Uh, which one? Oh my gosh! In I've moved, general, do you want to know how many times I've moved since I've been in LA? You haven't moved more than me. This is my fifteenth move. Whoa. I've moved seventy-five times in thirty years. Okay. I moved three times in the same apartment. No, no. <laughs> same, apart <laughs> same apartment <laughs> complex. That's right, you did. Same apartment <laughs> complex. <laughs> I and wish. I still hated it. I was like, God damn it! I got to move all this crap to the next. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> oh my gosh! I remember. That. <laughs> Link was left to move our place by himself because I was doing shows and I was at a hotel. I was back to back. I had a matinee. I had a late night show. I had a matinee. Mm -hmm. I had a late night show. I was in a hotel in Riverside. So he had to do it all by himself. Well, so you also sorry. had something happen at Christmas. Oh, the man. Flood. Yeah, we had a flood. So we got all, wa all new washer dryer unit. And when they were On putting Christmas. it in. Yeah. Oh, that's a different... Okay, this happened two times. Okay. We were first putting in the washer-dryer unit. Somebody who... We don't know how to do that stuff. So whoever was putting it in, I don't know if it was the guy from Sears. I don't know if it was... We had a contractor because we bought our, our condo. And, and one of them snipped something somewhere that wasn't supposed to be snipped. And when we did a load of laundry, our entire master bedroom was soaked we had to, it was brand new carpet. We had to get all new padding, all new carpeting, blah, 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 blah. And since no one could prove who did it, uh, we got stuck with the bill, which is, t we hadn't even moved in yet. We weren't even living there, which is awful. And then it happened Ugh. again Christmas Eve. There was a, it was when it was, do you guys remember when it was monsooning out oh, here for like 10 yeah. days? Well, our, our balcony had this sewage line thing. I don't know what the technical term is. That's a sewage line thing. We'll go with that. And it wasn't draining. So the water backed up like five feet, not literally, but really, really high. And it, same thing, our master bedroom all over again. And we had to get, we actually saved most of the carpet, but then we took like a, an industrial sized snake and fixed it so we were worried though we can't go out of town ever because if it rains our place is going to flood which is <laughs> terrible the, the pipes yeah. out here are small yeah and, and that's the problem whoever built yeah. california for years <laughs> yep. built them with really small pipes and didn't yeah. didn't uh anticipate the problems with yeah. dirt getting in the pipes and stuff getting in the pipes and it backing up right because there's like trees the growing whole, in the everything yeah. floods Stupid when we have a bad, bad rain season which really i'm here 14 years Last year, I think was the wow. was was the was the, was the was craziest, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Right as far as rain. Yeah. Yeah. After that, we didn't have rain for a long time, yep. so there was no problems with that. Did right. they call you Mr. California when you go back to New York? Now? Oh yeah, yeah, all the time. <laughs> all the time. All the time. I, That's I try insulting. To, I try. I try to. I try to play it up. I'll I'll, I'll spike my hair. I'll put like. Uh, um, um, color in it, you know, and make yeah. uh, highlights and that's stuff funny. like that. My, my wife gets mad. Gold she, hoops. Yeah. Uh -huh. that's I'll put funny. my earrings on. Yeah, totally. Yeah. We, had, uh, we had two deaths um, uh, the last couple days in Hollywood. One was George Romero, Dawn of the Dead, Night of the Living Dead, uh, and Martin Lando, Oscar winner for Ed Wood. Um, very, very sad icons. We don't really have a lot of icons in the entertainment industry anymore, which is kind of sad. Uh, this week coming up is also Comic-Con. Uh, your comic book character in general. Me? Yeah, I, I look at you as one. Yeah, you can you gonna venture down there? Um, if I get everything situated with this move, possibly mm -hmm. it's uh, taking a little bit more time than anticipated with all the issues going on. Oh, but you know, no. movies and, never easy. And you were dressed as Wonder Woman. I was yes. That there's not really a story to that. But <laughs> you look good. Oh, thank you. Yeah, th there's a photographer, and he had the costume. He was like, hey, can we do, like, a, a thing? And I'll, I wanted you to put this on. Because I had done another Wonder Woman shoot before, and he saw it and liked it. So, Yeah. Yeah. Mike, Wonder if you could be a character, who would it be besides yourself? <laughs> I don't know. Aquaman. <laughs> they got an Aquaman coming up pretty soon. They do. Aquaman. I'm, yeah. I'm a good swimmer. I love to... Love to 
to hang out in the water. I love it. Yeah. Oh, that's right. You always have the shots of you in the pool, which I find amazing. I mean, you're really tan. So. Well, I'm always, I, I like going to the pool. I have, I have a pool at my uh, complex that I'm the manager. It's at. relaxing for you. And I also belong to the Braemar Country Club. Oh. So that's hmm. not too far from my house. Uh, so I go there and I love being in the pool. Uh, even if it's for an hour, yeah, yeah. that's my. It's that's soothing the only for you, way I can relax is when I'm laying on a raft, uh, and I'm still <laughs> answering my phone because my phone is right next to me, <laughs> and I act like I'm in my office, but I'm in a pool. <laughs> hey, that works. Nice. However, you got to do it. However, See, you got to do the it. The pool makes a great office. If I, I had say. my choice, I'd be the Flash. I always wanted to be the fastest coming around and just doing anything, but. When do you and Lynn get a chance to go out? What are you seeing movie-wise? Are you well, going by trailers? She was in New York last week, and I wanted to see War of the Planet of the Apes. Yeah. So I took uh, one of the guys that works with me and his son, and because I, I like that stuff. My wife doesn't like that those type of movies. Right. So I went this week, and I saw that. It was good. Yeah. It got good reviews, 58, 58 million over the weekend, which was great. Mm -hmm. uh, we got Dunkirk coming out this Friday. Uh, Kenneth Branagh, you know, that should be really, really good. Probably a first Oscar contender for 2018, which will be good. Um, and then we got Girls Trip, which I think you women would like. Stephanie Frederick's film. Yes. Uh, which you'll like, you know, Queen Latifah, Jada Pinkett Smith. Uh, I think it's Regina Hall, and I can't remember the last you know, young, young lady is in it, but that looks really, really good. It's got it a good funny. reviews. That looks really But it looks funny. good. I think Lynn would like something like yeah. that. We just saw that other one uh, when the, the girls went on some type it's of. Like the was it oh, Rough Night? Was, was it Rough Night? What was it called? Rough, yeah. rough, rough Night. Rough Night. Yeah, 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 yeah. that was yeah. hilarious. Yeah. Yeah. Was it? Yeah, it was good. My wife liked that one. I just saw The House. Will Ferrell. I love Will Ferrell. He's very, very funny. I've been on a set with him before. Oh, yeah. And he was just, those guys are just like that when the cameras are not even rolling. They're I just, know. they're just really funny. As just, everything that comes out of his mouth. It's like, whoa, somebody write that down. That was hilarious. <laughs> <laughs> I believe it. He's one person I would love to meet. So how was that movie? Did you like it? It was good. Yeah, yeah, no, it was good. I, I mean, obviously, I love comedies, but I, I really love him and Amy Poehler. And I do, too. I've always been a big SNL fan, Same. so any of the cast that goes through, because um, that's originally where I, I, I started. You interned at... I interned there in 2002. Wow. So it was actually during the summertime when they weren't in production, but Lauren Michael still had um, Broadway video. So a lot of the movies, like the Adam Sandler movies, were all being produced right. in then. So I was in Lauren Michael's office, so I got to meet some of the people and the cast members. That which was so cool, cool, but um, I just grew up watching it, you know? Yeah. So um, now that I don't have cable, I don't watch as much, but uh, I still am a big fan of like all the cast members that come through. That's so. one of my dreams is to sing on Saturday Night Live. Yeah, well, <laughs> you went to Saturday Night Live a couple times, didn't you? No. Did you ever know? No? No. no. You were just busy out there controlling things. I would love to have been on Saturday Night Live. <laughs> <laughs> I, think, I mean, I love Trump, and I, 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 the way they make fun of him on, on uh, Saturday Night Live, night live i think it's funny because everybody should be made fun of yes people mm -hmm. get uh, just because he's the president and i like him it you still can make fun of him you can make fun of everybody Absolutely. they've made there is not a president that has been safe from right. the saturday night live right. cast no. nobody totally <laughs> yeah. no i would be honored if they were making oh, fun man. of me oh man yeah we, don't worry i make fun of well. myself I you do some, you know that's so. why i like you <laughs> all right give a recap who you are what you want people to know about that they may not know about you in your website Oh, okay. Uh, Brett Bauer, and my website is Brett Bauer Fit TV, and that's B R E T T B A U E R Fit TV dot com. Um, Definitely take a look at your books. The books are there. Uh, it's the same for social media, Instagram, and Facebook. It's Brett Bauer Fit TV, and um, I like long walks on the beach. I love puppies. I have a hairless cat named Barbara, who is very moody and bipolar, but I still love her. <laughs> Babs. And Miss Babs. <laughs> um, and uh, what else did you want? Um, your training. You're oh. really pushing your website, Brett Bauer Fit Feet, which I really like. Oh, You worked well, hard to get it. Thank you. Yes, it took, talking about not sleeping. I'm one of those people that when I have all these things in my brain and I get these ideas and I'm a creative mind person that I cannot sleep, you know. So until you have a check mark. Yeah. Until yeah. So I have a I okay. have a list on my phone and then I have a, a hard copy list of everything I gotta get done and all these ideas and then I make another list from that. So like I'm just <laughs> I'm neurotic when it comes to that stuff. So yes, but um, probably makes you very efficient. Mm, and also crazy too. <laughs> Mike, talk about your your trucks being on the set and your website and everything like that, and what your new goals may be regarding your business, which I think is important. Okay, well, I, I, you, you all know it's allamericansofty.com, and I own five trucks and two trailers and two, three ki kiosks. The kiosks are big now because we do a lot of uh, uh, parties in 
uh, offices where we roll it in and it's more intimate inside an office. So we, but it's scoop ice cream as a pet, uh, as opposed to the soft serve. Soft serves is on, on the trucks. Um, we do all kinds of parties, weddings, divorce parties, uh, bachelor parties. Divorce uh, parties. Divorce parties. There you go. Those are fun. We'll do anything. Have, my philosophy is have cash. We'll make anything work. You know what I mean? And I actually had his truck on my ranch one time when I had when I had horses, and it was fun. Yeah, we've Aww. we've done one year old birthday parties to porn porn movies being shot on the truck. You know what I mean? On the truck. On the truck. Literally. That was funny. My son, right? Uh, being a cop in New York, I had my uh, <laughs> I had my advantages. So my two nephews growing up, when they were sixteen years old, and you're not supposed to do this, I took them to strip clubs and got them. Uh, lap dances. Yeah. So when my son became That's what you 16, did in New York. That's what you did in New York. So ah. when in my son became 16, he's like, Dad, I'm 17 now, and you didn't bring me to a strip club like you brought Paul and Chris. And I was like, all right, what do I, I don't have the juice that I had in New York. <laughs> what, I'm an ice cream guy now. What the hell am I going to do? And then I had this porn uh, thing that, uh, that uh, ordered... They were going to shoot porn on the truck, so I brought my son and I le let him watch live porn on my truck. And he was like, "Yeah, Dad, don't high worry, five. it wasn't oh a truck out there." <laughs> Are you sure that it wasn't was, the ice cream that I see? It was <laughs> really, it was really cool. So, like I say, have cash, we'll do anything you want. We've had uh, Michael Jackson impersonators on mm -hmm. the truck. We've had midgets on the truck. Whatever you want, we'll get because it's your party. And the best thing, you have Frank Sinatra playing. Yes, Frank Sinatra was playing for the first five years, and then I became Californian, so I had to make Sinatra and then the Beach Boys, which is the most oh, California thing. It. So it's the only two musics that I have on the trucks now is Sinatra and the Beach Boys playing while you're eating your ice cream, which is very upbeat. People like it. I find it, you know, when I was riding in the trucks, I used to see people really happy. So you're happy, you're getting ice cream. What else is there to life, you know? Make everybody happy, you know? And also, my wife has a hair salon. Absolutely. NY2LA. Uh, it's on Ventura Boulevard in Tarzana. She's a beautiful woman. She does great she work. She's been uh, cutting hair for 28, 29 years, something like that. And uh, you could always make an appointment with her. She uh, does appointments only. And besides the, rest, the, the, um, the ice cream trucks and the... Hair salon. I opened up a restaurant, which was a mistake, but not a mistake. But I it mean, wasn't yours. It was part mine. It was. I went into it with two other guys, so it was three three guys. But the as food partners. was good. Food was great. Uh, it was a great atmosphere. The only thing it was in a gym, and they take up all the parking. You yeah. know, so don't ever get a restaurant that's in, mixed in uh, a property with a gym because the gym people will take up all the parking during the main hours when you. Sorry. Have to eat. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes, Sorry about that. My argument with the with the management company is if, if the LA Fitness wants to work out, let them park in the back and jog to the goddamn place. <laughs> my customers want to eat and get fat I hate and <laughs> hang out. <laughs> Victoria. Okay, uh, so as recap, singer songwriter, a better tomorrow is my single coming out September first on iTunes by September sixth. It will be on all platforms. And my website is www.victoriaplummer.net. Not like the kind that works on sticks. <laughs> <laughs> my Instagram is Victoria Plummer. Same, same deal. Victor oh, wait, it's Victoria. Yeah, I'm Victoria Plummer. Sorry. I'm well, Victoria Plummer. And the reason why that stuff is important because you want to make sure that everything is right when people are going to it. Because right. it takes so much time sometimes. It does. Thank you, everybody, for being here. I, what a good show it was. Next week's show, believe it or not, is Glow. We got the original Glow Girls. You've seen the ones on Netflix? Mm -hmm. Well, these are the women that came up with it, so they're my friends. This is going to be nuts. Wow. Um, and it's Brian Sebastian, movie reviews and more. Brian Sebastian, Facebook.com, 169 believe it or not, not 69, Mike, 169, and movie reviews and more on YouTube, movie reviews, the letter N more. And we will see you next week. Thank you, everybody, for being here. And uh, that's it. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you, Brian. Woo! That's a wrap. You're listening to Movie Reviews and More with Brian Sebastian, only on LA Talk Radio.